Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to User One Productions, my name is David, and in today's quick Unity tutorial we're going to be looking at a better flashlight system than we had incorporated before. In our very first flashlight tutorial it was a very simple on off system, uh, there was no lifetime to the flashlight, uh, there was no way to recharge it because it had unlimited lifetime, and you could toggle it on and off with your F button. So let me open up Unity, I'm going to show you what we're going to be creating and then we can get into the tutorial. So here I am in a blank scene, my flashlight is off, that's why it's completely black, if I press F. You'll notice that I'm in a little kitchen area. Uh, this is actually a game I've been creating, so we're going to have a dev upload on that uh, one day soon. But I'm just going to use this for an example. You can see like the light kind of follows us around, which we'll be going over later today. As well as the flashlight has lifetime to it. So if I actually press tab, it's going to pull up my phone real quick. And you're going to see that 72, 71, that percent over there is my flashlight. If I turn the flashlight off, it stops counting. And then we have that zero all the way on the right of the phone. So if I look at this battery right here, and I press E, we now have one. And if I press R to reload it, we go back up to 100. And as you can see, since the flashlight is still on, it continuously goes down. I'm not going to bore you with having it go all the way to zero. You're just going to have to take my word. When it hits zero, the flashlight turns off, and it can no longer be turned back on until you reload it with Alright, so now here we are in just a blank scene. All I've done is add this little ground with a grass texture on it. And I am currently using the FPS controller in the Unity Standard Assets. Uh, if you don't already have that, go to the Assets Store or the Package Manager and just install them because it's a very useful little character to be able to use for testing and to improve upon. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up the FPS controller. I'm going to right click and go Create Empty. I'm just going to call this Flashlight Holder. And then inside the flashlight holder, we are going to add a spotlight, just like that. So we have a little spotlight with our character. I'm going to grab that flashlight holder and bring it up to where our camera is, right about there. And then that spotlight, I'm going to rename to flashlight. And then with my directional lighting, I'm actually going to turn the intensity down to something, say, like 0.2. So now the scene is much darker. And on the flashlight object itself, I'm going to change the range to about 50. I'll change the spotlight angle to 50 as well, and the intensity I think I'll do 1.25. Okay, so now if I go ahead and play the game, you'll see we have a flashlight object attached to our character. It's not following our main camera yet because we're going to be using a script to do that. Uh, most of the time you just attach it right to your camera itself, and then it would just follow you around like this. But that's not how I want it because I want it to sway around and have a delay. I don't want it to be exactly where my camera is at all times. So what I'm actually going to do, the whole flashlight holder, I'm going to take that out of the controller. So that way my player and the flashlight holder with the flashlight inside are two separate game objects. This is something you definitely want to do uh, to get that swaying effect. If you play the game now to test that you did it right, if you walk away, your light should not be following you. Perfect. So what I'm going to do right off the bat is in the flashlight holder, which is the empty game object, I'm going to add the flashlight offset script to it. You can find this script link in the description down below. Uh, it's a Google Drive where I put pretty much everything, scripts, models, sound effects, everything I use in the tutorial series is up for a free download on there. As well in the description, right now would be a good time for me to tell you, we have a Discord, and we just hit, I think, 102 people in there, so thank you all so much for the support in there, uh, and it just keeps growing every day, which is great. Back to the tutorial now, I'm going to change the speed in the offset to 8. And we're actually going to take a little peek at what this script is doing in the background. Pretty much, we have two private variables, which is a vector3, which is going to be our offset, and then a follow object, which obviously we are going to set the game object follow to our main camera in the scene. So we want to make sure not only is the camera tagged with main camera, but it is like the only camera in the scene. Okay, and then the vector offset is just going to offset it from our camera, uh, depending on our speed. And then we multiply it by time dot delta time because we want it to go off of normal time, which is 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, instead of FPS. Because if we didn't have this time dot delta time, if you had 300 frames a second, it would be following the camera around 300 frames a second, which we don't want. So it's a pretty basic little script on how to get an object to follow you around. Let's go back in the Unity, and we will confirm that the first person character, which is the name of the camera here, is tagged main camera and then since this is a new scene it usually defaults with another camera which is you know all the way out there in the distance I'm not using it so I'm just gonna delete it 
So now if I press play, that flashlight is not only going to walk with us, but you're going to see it have a little time to catch up. And it adds a little more realism to the flashlight object itself. Okay, and now the inside the flashlight holder, which is the actual light object, the flashlight, we are going to add the flashlight script, which in the description, again, it'll be in the description, um, it's going to be called Flashlight Advanced. Uh, I haven't already changed that name, but it will be Flashlight Advanced when you go ahead and download it. Let's open that script and just read off what's going on in here. So we have a public light object, which is going to be our light that we are going to assign. We have TMP Pro, which is going to be a text object, and then another TMP Pro for battery text. Keep in mind, whenever you're using uh, TextMess Pros, you want to be up here in the using functions. You want to have using TextMess Pro right there. We have a public float for lifetime, which I set to 100. A public float for batteries, because we need to know how many batteries we're going to have. I have that to zero, because in my game, I don't want my player to start with any. You can obviously change that in the editor if you want to. We have two sound effects for on and off, and then two private bools, which are going to say whether we're on or off. All right, so now here we are in our start function. We have light equals get component light. So it's going to grab whatever object this is attached to. It's going to only use the light component to it. When we start the game, I have off to true because I want my flashlight to start off. And with that, we need light.enabled equals false because, like I said, I want my thing to be off. If you wanted it to start on, do on equals true and then light enabled equals true. Next up we have a void update. So we have our two strings right here which is going to be the text for the flashlight and text for the battery. And then you can set this to say whatever you want it to. Right now it's just going to display the lifetime number plus percent. Now say you wanted it to say flashlight equals yada yada yada, you just do this. You write in flashlight, give it a little space, go in between the parentheses, and then do a plus sign. So now the text will automatically say flashlight plus 99%. Okay, that's how that works. For my specific game and how this script is going to come defaulted, it is just going to say the lifetime number, which will be 100 starting and then the percent. And that's the same exact way it's going to work for the battery. It's just going to display the number of batteries. And then we have this juicy stuff right here to turn it on and off. Pretty much if we press down whatever button we set to flashlight, and it's off, it turns it on, it plays a little sound. And then we have the opposite, which is right here. If we press the same button for flashlight, and it is currently on, it turns it off and uses an off sound effect. Right here is how the lifetime works. So if it's on, the lifetime gets minus one every second in real time. This pretty much says if it ever hits zero or below zero, it's going to turn it off. And then it'll always set the lifetime to zero. I have this piece of line right here because if I didn't have this, it would just keep counting down from zero. So it'd go negative one, negative two, negative three. Right here we have lifetime. If it gets over 100, the lifetime will always go back to 100. So say you're at 99 and you reload a flashlight and the flashlight's value is 50, it then would be 149. But because this little line right here, it's going to just default it back to 100. Right here, if we press down our reload button, which we have to set up as well, and our batteries is greater than one, the batteries get subtracted by one, so you are using that one battery, and the lifetime gets added to 50. Now, you could definitely change this to a different number, but this is the number you want to change, lifetime plus equals whatever. It could be 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever you guys want. I just have it to 50 because that's the number I specifically wanted to use. And then if we press down reload and the batteries is currently zero, we just return uh, the value so it doesn't do anything. And then we say if the batteries ever go below zero, we just set it back to zero. Very simple to do. Now we're going to have to set up all the stuff in here. So we're going to grab the light component on the flashlight, put it inside there. In our FPS controller, we will right click UI, do a canvas. We want to go canvas scalar, scale with screen size, just do 1920 by uh, 1080. It's a very native size to most monitors and is very simple to scale. Inside the canvas, you're gonna go UI TextMess Pro. It might have a little import window pop up. That's just you importing the TextMess Pro. I'm gonna double click it and use orthographic view to look at it from the front, because currently our text is right here. You can barely see it in the camera, but it's there. 
I'm going to go over here to the transform of it. I'm going to hold shift and do this left click over here just so it can be scaled on the left over there. Place it in the area I want it, which will be top left of my screen. And I'm just going to call this um, lifetime. We can duplicate that and call it batteries and then just bring it down. It doesn't matter what you put in the text component because the script is automatically going to change it. So let's go back to that flashlight. We have the two text objects, which is lifetime and batteries. We have lifetime I set to 100, batteries at zero. You can obviously change that. So if you want to start with two, you can start with two, which I'll do for tutorial reasons. And then we have an on off sound effects. So to get my sounds in the scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my FPS controller, go create empty. I'm going to rename this to flashlight on, and then I'm going to click and drag the flashlight on into that uh, empty game object. I'm going to play on wake, turn that off, and then I will duplicate that, rename it to flashlight off, and then flashlight off sound effect right there. Perfect. Back to the flashlight, we need to assign those two audios that we just added to our character. And now, if everything is going well, we should be able to press play. The flashlight turns off, we see 10, uh, 100% and then 2. Press F and the number starts going down. We press R to reload it. And perfect. And we cannot reload beyond 0. Very nice. Now you guys might be getting an error real quick and that's because we didn't really set up the buttons. Uh, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we have flashlight and reload. In order to do that, you go edit, project settings, player, nope, input manager. Uh, change the size of something bigger than what it is. I just changed it to 25. And then you want to rename one of them to flashlight. You want to have positive button to F or whatever other button you want to use to use your flashlight. And then you do the same thing for reload. Rename it to reload and then positive button R. In my case, at least. And then that will fix the problem of it not working inside Unity. All right, now we just got to set up batteries because obviously now that we have a flashlight system that has lifetime, we need to be able to pick up more batteries for the player to use. So what I will do is I have this little model right here of some batteries. It's not the greatest model, but um, it'll work for tutorial reasons. So I'll click and drag it into the scene. And once again, this will be in the description as well. I'll go add component. I'm going to find box collider. Just like that it's gonna make a pretty good box around it i'll make sure is trigger is on and then those batteries will get battery pickup let's look at that script real quick uh so pretty much we have a private bool which says if we're in reach or not a public pickup text which is just gonna be a normal text object because it's easier to use for most people we have the flashlight game object because it's gonna be referencing scripts to the flashlight and then a pickup sound effect. So to start, we want in reach to be false and then the flashlight to be find tag flashlight or find game object flashlight. So you wanna make sure that the flashlight is spelled exactly how that script is, which mine wasn't. I had it uppercase, I need it lowercase for the script to find it, right there. Uh, we have avoid on trigger exit and on trigger enter. So pretty much if our reach tool becomes in contact with whatever object this is uh, linked to, this script is linked to, in reach becomes true and then the pickup text becomes true and then the opposite if we exit with uh, that looking object the reach tool uh, in reach becomes false pickup text becomes false and then we have a little update function right here so if we are in reach and then we press down interact which we have to set up that button as well I'll show you that once again right after I go over the script we grab the component from flashlight and we make sure the batteries plus equals one we play the pickup sound the in reach becomes false, pickup text becomes false, and then we just simply destroy the object of the battery. All right, so back to project settings input manager. We need the interact. So once again, if you don't have enough uh, axes, uh, sorry, that's a weird word to say, axes, um, change the number. I have it to 25. Change the name to interact, and then positive button, whatever you want to pick up with, which I'm just going to use E. So back to the batteries, we need a sound effect and a text object for it. Pretty easy to do the sound effect. I'll just duplicate the flashlight sound and I will call it battery pickup. And then I'll add my pickup sound effect to it. And then we just assign that inside the script. And now we need the text. So once again, we'll go into our canvas, right click, go UI. This will be a regular text object. This is going to say pick up 
scroll down a little bit we'll turn the size up let's do um let's do 30 for testing reasons if it doesn't pop up in your game view just change the width and height i'll do 200 by 60 and then it should reappear i'm going to go to the alignment make sure it's centered and then i'll actually bring it down a little bit so i'll change my uh position y to negative let's say 32 I'll change that to a white color and then i will duplicate that so now we have two text objects i'm going to bring it down below the pickup and then we're just rename this to e because that is my pickup um button i will make the e a child of the other text object and i will call the text pickup text awesome and then we just assign that with the battery in the pickup text and now one more thing we need to do before we get this working is go to your first person character which is the camera of the player right click and then you want to add 3d cube okay this is going to be the very basics of creating a um a reach type tool most people like to use raycast but i like to do this because you can manipulate it a little better with scripts so i'm just going to scale it down really small and then I'm going to just pull it out. And this is gonna be the length of where your player can actually reach objects. So you want this to kind of be realistic. For testing, I'll keep it like this. In fact, I'm gonna scale it down a little bit so it's thinner, just cause I want my players to be very precise when picking something up, something like that, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and call this the reach tool. And we wanna add a new tag. So if you don't already have the reach tool in tags, go add tag and then just call it reach with a capital R. Go back to that uh, stick you just created, make sure it's tagged reach. And we can actually turn mesh renderer off. And now when we play the game, my friends, if everything is working well and it's not, batteries pick up text, da 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 da. That's why, okay. My mistake, in my, in my script, I didn't have the pick up text set active false not really a huge deal it'll be fixed in your guys's script just for me i had to go ahead and fix that and now when we play the game the text should automatically turn off which it does perfect so let's turn the flashlight on and our lifetime's going down we currently have two batteries if we walk over here and the reach tool comes in contact with it we can pick up with e if we look away the text disappears we have a sound effect play and now we have three extra batteries awesome Perfect. So now we have a lifetime, batteries that you could pick up, and the flashlight kind of sways. Now, let's just go over a few more things we could do to the flashlight to make it a little more realistic. Uh, so if you're using, say, an LED flashlight, it would be very much white like this. But if you're trying to accomplish a horror game, you kind of want to give it a more warm tint. And you can adjust your values accordingly. Let me change my range to 75. So this would be more for like a fluorescent flashlight and it kind of gives more of a horror vibe to it. So now let's look at that flashlight. Yeah, that looks a little more scarier if you ask me. Uh, one more thing we can actually do. If you download the standard assets, go to your flashlight, you'll see cookie texture. So if you actually click that and type in cookie, you'll see this flashlight one right here. And when you play the game, it just pretty much masks it a little bit. So it has... Um, like rings around it like an actual flashlight would. And that's pretty much how you accomplish the Unity 3D Advanced Flashlight by User One Productions. <laughs> With all that being said, my friends, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you guys have found it entertaining and useful. As I've said before, my friends, my Discord server is linked in the description down below, as well as every model, script, sound effect you heard in this video. Thank you all so much for the support, and I can't wait to see what else this channel comes to. Uh, the community keeps growing, and I really do appreciate that. You guys are awesome. And until the next time, this is User1Productions, signing off for now. Peace.